Okay, you. I've got quite a few videos on Edmodo, and Mr. Mumbles be making on if, well, diffraction, Young slits, etc. Um, this is basically a complimentary video, um, showing you a simulation that basically will help you explain because there's some really hard concepts here uh, about diffraction. So, zip through this. What you should be happy with. Um, I mean, we're in a lab shown you a ripple tank where you've got waves. Um, these are basically what well, are straight, straight plane waves coming through a gap and they start to bend through. And But if you make the gap size different, i.e. here, the gap from there to there is much larger than the wavelength of the wave. If you do that, you get little bending, i.e. small amount of diffraction. But when you make the gap size comparable to the wavelength, suddenly diffraction gets massive. Um, and I always talk about this in the lab, the fact if you're in your lab and you've got a door open, sound waves can bend through the gap in the door, but light waves don't. And that's because the gap in the door is comparable to sound waves wavelength, but light waves, white waves, um, the wavelength is much, much smaller than a gap in the door. Now to go with that, and this is the hard one, and you will not be asked this in the exam, I get asked it a lot, is why does diffraction happen? Well, the reason why diffraction happens is, is you've got to think about, as the plane waves come along like here, when they go through the gap, you see it's bending out this point. Well, Huygens worked on this and gives something called Huygens principle. It's like taking lots of little sources of light, well, waves here. Now, each of those wave sources is going to form circular wave fronts this one here creates, for example, is going to be the red ones coming out like that. And this one here creates the blue ones coming out. And this one here can just about see the green. But when you basically put all those wave fronts together to see the resultant wave front, can you see the curving coming out? And that's probably the easiest way to explain why you actually get the bending of the light as it goes through. Just treat as several different points going here. And that's the best way that I can really explain it. Now, Mr. Mumba's already gone through videos explaining about path difference. And the idea of here is when waves go through in young slits, is where you've got the single light source goes through a single gap. You've got source one, source two, and you've got the interference pattern. And that's what you see in the screen. We all show these when you got back in the lab again. Um, now, the path difference is all about here. It's about how many ways they travel, but that's really explained to you. Um, and you should be happy with it. Then you've got the horrible nasty proof, which is actually a very dodgy proof, um, is where the width of the fringe pattern is lambda D over S. Now, to show you this, and you do need to know this about this equation, and you need to know the fact if you increase S, which is the slit separation, <coughs> the fringe separation goes down. You also get multiple choice questions, which we'll give you later on. If the distance from the screen, the slits goes up, that goes up. I'm appreciating my multicolor here. Uh, now I'm going for orange. And if the wavelength goes up, this also goes up. Now to show you this happening is this is a simulation, which works very nicely for young slits. Let me down thing to work. Uh, here we go. Now this is where this is what you literally see on the screen. If you pass blue light through young slit, source one, source two, what you see is bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. Where here is going to be bright intensity, therefore the intensity goes right up here. When you get the dark, the intensity obviously goes down. Now, going back to my formula, I've said now, if the wavelength goes up, the width spacing goes up as well. So go with that then, here, the width spacing is a spacing from here to here. So if I now very excitingly increase the wavelength, whee, come on, increase the wavelength. Can you see we're getting further apart? And you do need to be able to do these some multiple choice questions. The wavelength goes up, the W goes up, and then obviously you bring the wavelength down. Apart from changing colour, they'll get close together because the width spacing reduces. When we do the practical work, you'll see to measure these, what you do is take a quite a few of them, and then you basically divide by the number of widths, or well, number of W, to work out. You don't ever measure one. This is very hard to measure from centre here to centre there. 
Now to go back to the formula here, then says D goes up, W goes up. I can test my simulation here. That's the distance from the slits to the screen. If I increase this, again, you can see they get further apart. And you'll find when you do the practical work, you do normally do a pretty big D because you want the width spacing pretty big because it brings back down something called the uncertainty, which we have mentioned in experimental work earlier in the year. And the final one to prove it is working. I think I've not done this one here. If the S goes up, i.e. the slit separation, the distance between S1 and S2, that should go down. So I go back to my simulation here. Yeah, the slit separation goes up. You see, they got close together. If I make S smaller, they get further apart. So that simulation shows you what is happening. If you pass more than one light through, what I've got the ability of software as well, is I can pass now through a different color. And gosh, is that yellowy orangey? Yeah, sort of thing. And um, this is where these color stars coming out. I'll make it a bit brighter as you see it. And um, therefore, because they have two different wavelengths, the fringe separation is going to be different. Therefore, this is why they separate out. And that's why when you pass white light through, um, you basically start seeing red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet out here, because all the different wavelengths end up in different positions. Remember, right in the center is going to be white because all the same colors overlap each other. And you've got some pictures, I think I'll put them and get back here of where you've used young slits here's going to be uh, white light and here's going to be when you got sorry green light white light there's white light and we got the colors coming out and there's going to be green light over here okay right i'm gonna stop that one just there and then i'm gonna make because our problems upload is in youtube and what i'm going to do next is on the next little video whoops is I'm going to go bring in, go a bit more diffraction and show how diffraction comes in young slits.